Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining me this morning. These are the readings and sermon for Sunday, November 21st, Christ the King Sunday. Before I begin, I just want to wish all of those who I won't see this week a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have a wonderful day with your family and friends. And I also have an announcement to make if there's anyone out there who knows of anyone who is able to play the organ, uh, I'd be delighted if you would let me know. Sadly, this past week at Emmanuel, we lost our organist, John Hine. So if you know of anybody who is able to play the organ out there, just let me know. Thank you. So let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from the book of the prophet Daniel, chapter 7, verses 9 and 10, and 13 and 14. A reading from Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven, and he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our psalm this morning is a reading of Psalm 93. The Lord is king, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness befits your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Our second lesson this morning is a reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 4b through 8. A reading from Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 18, verses 33 through 37. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, 
Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A tennis professional was giving a lesson to a new student. After watching the student take several swings at the tennis ball, he began to suggest ways in which the strokes might be improved. But each time a suggestion was made, the student would interrupt with his own version of what was wrong and how to correct it. After several such interruptions, the pro began to nod his head in agreement. When the lesson ended, a woman who had been watching said to the pro, Why did you go along with that arrogant man's stupid suggestions? The old pro just smiled and said, I learned a long time ago that it is a sheer waste of time to try to sell answers to a person who just wants to buy echoes. That's the same sentiment shared by Jesus in his encounter with Pontius Pilate in our gospel lesson. Pilate didn't want answers. He only wanted to hear his own echoes. Pilate wasn't concerned with justice being done, or else he would have seen an innocent man standing before him and let Jesus go. Today is the last day of the liturgical year, the one designated by the church around the world as Christ the King Sunday. Of course, the idea of Christ as king came long before the church incorporated it on the calendar. If we go back to the gospel accounts, we find all four gospel writers recounting the confrontation we read about a moment ago. The religious authorities had dragged Jesus before the Roman governor Pontius Pilate in hopes he would be found guilty of treason. Pilate asks Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus banters back, is that your own idea or did others talk to you about me? Pilate replies, am I a Jew? It was your own people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus answers, my kingdom is not of this world. And we Christians know it is not. How could it be when King of the Jews was the inscription posted over Jesus's head, not above a glorious throne, but atop a cruel cross. Still, we know Jesus' kingdom is real. After all, why have we ever heard of Pontius Pilate or the high priests Annas and Caiaphas? The only reason we know those names is because they were once the part of the story of Jesus. Or what about Pilate's great Roman Empire or all the others of the past 2,000 years? They have risen and fallen. Kings and kingdoms have come and gone. Presidents and prime ministers, tyrants and dictators have had their moments of glory. But through them all, millions upon millions all over the world have humbled themselves at the foot of that cross and bowed their heads in reverence and honor at the name of Jesus. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The Alpha and the Omega. As you may know, those are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. To say something or someone is the Alpha and Omega is to affirm completeness, the beginning and the end, the A to Z and everything in between. This is an interesting choice of words for the writer of Revelation. John lived in a time of vicious persecution. To make a public profession of faith in Jesus Christ put one in danger of being legally murdered as an enemy of the Roman Empire. 
John himself was on the prison island of Patmos as he wrote, and prison islands weren't simply places of incarceration. Normally, they were holding cells for those awaiting, for those awaiting execution. <clears throat> In the poetic language of Revelation that we call apocalyptic, John pictured the awful conditions as they existed in his day and was convinced they were God's judgment upon a world gone wrong. He described the devastation of the forces of nature run amok. He noted the moral rot and decay that turns humans into monsters and destroys a society from within. He saw the disastrous results of violent conflict, but with eyes of faith, John gazed into the future and saw a better day, a day in a world ruled by Jesus the King, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is and was and is to come, the Almighty. Others have seen a better day as well. In just a few days from now, we will join with family and friends as we gather to celebrate Thanksgiving. We remember the pilgrim's journey in the year 1620 that had begun so full of hope for a new life of religious freedom in a warm and welcoming land. Instead, they landed at Plymouth Rock in mid-December. Not the best time of the year in Massachusetts, believe me, I know. Until they could build houses and establish themselves on the land, they made their home on board the Mayflower. The men went ashore every morning to work, returning to the little ship at night. They built a common house to which the sick and the dying were transferred, placed their four little cannons in a fort, which they built on a hill close by, built two rows of houses with a wide street between them, and finally landed their stores and provisions. Then the whole company came ashore toward the last of March, and in April, the Mayflower sailed away. The following winter was hard and bitter. Half of the 102 pilgrims died of malnourishment, disease, and exposure. Only about 30 of those who survived were over the age of 16. And to top it all off, a second shipload of 35 settlers arrived without any provisions because they expected to live off the crops the first settlers had raised. By the end of their second winter in Plymouth, food had to be rationed again. Five kernels of corn for each person per day. It was a very hard life. In fact, some proposed a day of mourning to honor all those who had perished, but the others said no, a day of thanksgiving would be more appropriate. After all, even though half had died, half had not. That was reason to give thanks to the God who had seen them through. The eyes of their faith were the same as those of St. John so many centuries before. They saw their world in the loving care and control of the Alpha and the Omega. And that, my friends, is the point of this Christ the King Sunday. This day is a reminder that Jesus isn't simply some ancient wandering rabbi who taught timeless truths, not simply some helpful Hebrew healer who had remarkable power over disease and even death, not simply a compassionate, caring friend who reached out to those whom society rejected, but rather the God of all creation come down to earth incarnate in human flesh, Christ the King. Jesus is telling us that something new is now at work in human history, that death itself has been conquered, that no terror on earth can intimidate or defeat those who live in the Lord by faith, that the same God who brought Jesus from death into new life will also resurrect from the defeats of history every word and work and thought offered in obedience to him who taught us that to love is to live. So don't waste your time, my friends, with mere echoes. Hear the truth of the King and let it take root in your life. Amen. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit 
Bless you all now and forevermore. Amen.